Do you know how to determine the amount of energy required to heat a substance to a specific temperature? If the answer is no, stick around. We've got a simple method to help you determine the energy required for almost any heating application. Nathan Ayersman here, Business Unit Manager for Process Heat for the Valen Corporation. And today, we're going to get into some fun math. Let's start with the total heat equation. The equation is total heat required, Q sub T, equals heat absorbed, Q sub A, plus heat loss, Q sub L, plus the safety factor. As you can see, this equation has three different components. One by one, we'll cover each component so that you can determine exactly how to calculate the total energy required in kilowatts for your application. First though, I wanna talk about the difference between startup and operational heat requirements. The startup or preheat is defined as the amount of heat required to bring a system from its initial temperature to the final operating conditions in a specified length of time. Think of it like preheating your oven before you bake a batch of cookies. Operational heat is defined as the amount of heat required per unit of time, usually an hour, once the system is at its specified operating temperature and doing the work you need it to do. The majority of the energy is on the operational side, so our focus will be determine the kilowatts required on this portion of the equation. The first part of the equation is Q sub A, which is the heat energy absorbed by the materials. Here's the formula. Q sub A equals mass times the specific heat, or C sub P, times the delta T. Take that, divide it by 3412, which in turn is divided by time. This equation allows us to determine the total kilowatts required for any application. It uses four different values. The mass, which is in pounds, specific heat, which is BTUs per pound per degree Fahrenheit, the temperature change, which is in degrees Fahrenheit, and the heat of time, which is in hours. In order to solve for Q sub A, there's three simple steps you should follow. Number one, gather information. Number two, determine needed values and convert to appropriate units. Number three, solve the equation. Don't get overwhelmed, it's easy. I promise I'll walk you through it step by step. Step one, gather information. Let's say you have an oven that is used to heat 500 pounds worth of granite blocks in a batch process. The oven is seven and a half feet wide, seven and a half feet high, 10 feet long, has steel walls with two inch thick fiberglass insulation. In this scenario, we need to determine the amount of heat in kilowatts absorbed by the granite as they're being heated from 50 degrees to 230 degrees in two hours. So we start with a list. Heated media, granite, weight, 500 pounds, oven dimensions, width, seven and a half feet, length, 10 feet, height, seven and a half feet, material, steel, insulation, two inches thick, fiberglass, initial temp 50, final temp 230, and our heat up time is two hours. Now we can determine needed values and convert to appropriate units. For this batch oven scenario, we need to determine specific heat of granite and temperature rise. Specific heat values can often be found online with helpful websites like the engineering toolbox. Here you can find the specific heat values for numerous materials. Just make certain the values you have are the correct units. This is really important. Looking online, we're able to determine that granite has a specific heat value of 0.189 BTUs per pound per degree Fahrenheit. Solving for temperature rise or the change in temperature is fairly simple. It's just the final temperature minus the initial temperature, so 230 degrees Fahrenheit minus 50, which equals 180 degrees delta. Step three, solving the equation. If the first two steps are done correctly and the values are in the correct units, this step is a breeze. All you've got to do is plug in the values. So you can see we're putting in the mass, the C sub P, the delta T, and the time required. Do some simple math. And now you know the kilowatts absorbed per hour for your heating application. In this scenario, we end up with a total energy required of 2.5 kilowatts. If during the heating process, your heated media undergoes a phase change from solid to liquid or from a liquid to a gas, this will also affect the total kilowatts required. It takes a tremendous amount of thermal energy to create phase change. But fortunately for our batch oven scenario, the heated material doesn't change phases, so we can ignore this potential influence and move on to the next component, Q sub L, or heat loss. Heat loss can have significant impact when determining the kilowatts required. To find the heat loss, you need the area of the heated container, the materials of construction of that container, and the difference to the ambient. 
Heat loss curves allow you to determine the loss in watts per square foot per hour. After you know that value, all you have to do is plug in your values into the following equation. Q sub L, or heat loss, equals the curve value times the total square foot divided by 3412. This gives you the total kilowatts lost per hour due to heat loss. You can look up these curves online, or you can plug the parameters into a computer program. The application engineering team at Valen runs these types of calculations all the time, and if you'd like help with these, please contact us using the contact information provided in the video description. Here's the heat loss curve that best fits our application. We can utilize the curve to determine the value of the wattage lost per square foot per hour. In our scenario, due to the two inch thick insulation and 160 degree difference to the ambient, assuming 70 degree ambient and 230 oven temp, the curve gives us a value of five watts per square foot per hour. Next, we'll need to calculate the area of the heated container. Because we already have the dimensions, this is fairly easy. It's just length times width times height. Using this formula, we can determine the area of the oven is 562.5 square feet. From there, all you need to do is plug the values into the heat loss equation, and we get a value of about one kilowatt lost to ambient. Time to move on to the final component, the safety factor. This component basically ensures that you'll have more than enough energy available for your application. We recommend adding at least 10%, sometimes up to 20 if the conditions are sketchy or there's many unknown variables. How do you do this? You just add your Q sub A, your heat absorbed, plus your Q sub L, heat lost, values together and multiply it by 20%. Doing this, we get a safety factor of 0.7 kilowatts. Once you've calculated that, you're pretty much good to go. All that's left to do is add the three numbers together and you're done. You have now successfully calculated the total energy required for your heating application. In our scenario, we get a final total of 4.2 kilowatts per hour. I really hope this video was helpful. For more information on Valen's offering and how to contact us, please click on the links provided in the video description below. If you have any questions or comments about the video, please let us know in the comments section. Thank you again for watching and please stay tuned for more how-to videos in the future.